so that's the very start of my trip to Kovichan. Now it's 11 a.m. I know pretty late, but it has the last night uh, night shift, which is finished at 7 something p.m. So as soon as I'm ready, I'm ready to have this trip in start of November in DC. We head to the ferry. Oh yeah. That's where you're going. Okay. Um, yeah. I have a big plan, I want to go to Povichan area, to Duncan, to speak with the native people. Yeah, I want to make some YouTube about it. from Ukraine who spent already around six months in Canada. Now it's the start of November and uh, I'm finally going to my to make my very first YouTube video. So I very hope for your for, for your support uh, and respect to me. I uh, because uh, my, my 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 viewers, my subscribers, it's uh, it's a people for who I'm making this video, and uh, I would like that you be you be proud of me, guys, and I will try to do my best. So today, today I'm going to I'm going to the some uh, first nation reservation, or how we call it, the Indian reservation in Ukrainian language. So, <coughs> so little fun, a bit fact first. In Canada, it's living around 850 First Nations of people, and uh, and the good half of them they living actually on the British Columbia, but uh, but but they living in a very small tribes. So right now I'm going to over to, uh, to the biggest tribe on the BC on, on the BC coast. It's called the area called Kovichan. And in this area, officially registered around 5,000 people. Half of these people uh, live right now on the, on the Skovichan area, and half of these people somewhere away of reservation. So, my plan is came to the capital of the area, the very small, very cute city Duncan, and go to the local side, to, to the local culture center to get a more info about um, uh, about all of these tribes and all the places where I can go and where I can find these people to speak with because Wiki Wikipedia don't give a lot of information actually about it. So that's actually the reason why I'm making this video to to create some information which Wikipedia can provide to to, to you guys. And I hope this job will be will be done good. Oh yeah, I'm finally arrived to the terminal. What do we find here? Some cafe and some lens and cafe. Wow, somebody have a hilarious humor taste. Yeah. So, I stayed like this around uh, my first 10 minutes and uh, through the 50 cars who, who, who drive that way I didn't receive any reaction, like this car, like this car, they just, they just, they just ignore me, which is mostly happen many if you fight them. Yeah, but most people don't give a shit about you, only a new guy. I said about you and I didn't meet these very nice persons yet here on a on a short way. Let's wait. I don't have a choice. Um the next bus it will be in an hour. In an hour. It's a lot of time I can't waste I can I can't waste it. I'm already out out of time and I'm most probably afraid that this day I will yeah I will not to go along for too much to the culture center and stuff. Probably just arrive in the evening and end up somewhere in local bar. <laughs> we'll try to make some conversation with locals. Yeah, that's my plan. That's my plan. So, after 25 minutes of freezing on the rain, 
I was very lucky to drop by Doc. No. Yeah, Doc no, finished a huge job. So, what are you working on again? Uh, I'm doing sprinklers, irrigation sprinklers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, just uh, actually right beside the ferry where I picked you up. Can you repeat the story about housing in Canada? Oh, yeah, it's very interesting. So the places that are more um, popular to live, like closer to the ocean and stuff, like in Victoria, the average price for a four-bedroom home is about $800,000. But if you go over a couple provinces to Saskatchewan, you can get a four-bedroom home for around $60,000 instead of the $800,000 just because of the harsh summers and the harsh winters. But if you can put up with it, you can make a fantastic life in those provinces. As I guess, not all really about very distant places because now you can see average prices, so it's much more than no set, 270k, which is way more cheaper than in British Columbia anyway. So we have a little break on our road to for take some <laughs> for take some serious coffee guys. It's nothing more than serious it's very serious coffee at this level. A very serious place. Uh, so let me tell you something how North Americans uh, sell and make a coffee. They, they make a coffee in, all, in this big, uh, big stuff. We brew it for like, for, for, um, in this big stuff for 10 or 15 liters. And after they, uh, they, they just pour it away on a cup and here is the black coffee. But in every, in every places you can also add to this black coffee some, some cream or milk, uh, sugar on your taste. That's how the how North American selling the coffee. It's actually the best leads which I ever saw because you can actually open it and close. It's very progressive scent. I never saw it before. Even we live in 2022. So it's a good good idea for business guys think about it. <laughs> So, I almost finished my drive with the Noah and Noah, so why do you pick up me? Sorry? Why do you pick up me? Oh, just because I just wanted to, I saw you standing in the rain and I, I wouldn't want to stand in the rain, so I thought we may as well pick up Simon and it's been like a great ride, we've got to chat and get to know each other, it's been great. Uh, oh, thank you very much. I very appreciate to have a conversation with you and that you not leave me on this rain alone. Yeah, no, it's yeah. gross outside, man. I couldn't leave you in the rain. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, you know, they just don't care. Like, like you know, like uh, nobody owes anybody to strangers, but in the same time, like, you know, I saw, like, you know, cars, where is the single people driving with a full, full free space on the car, and I have, like, thoughts. Like, why, why, why are you just stop me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then, like, and I always want you to have good memories of Canada too, right? Like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And even more, you make a good memories for me. Awesome. Which is great. Which is great. Thank you a lot. And thank you for this coffee. Love it. This is the this is the bridge I'm thinking will then you got a nice dry spot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it can dash pretty well. Let's see. So I had a great ride with uh, Noah on his working red car and now I'm hence watching some logging work over here, watch some uh, motorway going more far away to my direction and hoping for a good luck that some of this car will stop it. Stop it. So, after a very warm van, I'm again on the highway, I'm again on the bus stop, but the difference is uh, I'm not staying on the main road, I'm staying just on the side road because, because it's not, not very safe to stay on the main highway when the car's going like with the speed around 80 km per hour averagely. 
And I don't sure in Europe is not legal to stay in the water way like this. And I not sure. Uh, and I think in Canada is not a very legal as way. Well. So um, freezing, getting to that, and hoping for a car. It's uh, just uh, 50 kilometers to Duncan. Now the couch, the couch, the couch looks nice. It's a good place. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, any good places you can advise me around? Any what? Sorry? Any good place like, around? Do you mean to like hotels to stay at? Mm -hmm. No, I mean like um, like the cities or villages where you know where I can have a, like you know like um, like um, cultural heritage with this you know this First Nation because it's why I came in there. I want to investigate yeah, this area. So, but I'm not the, I'm not the guy to ask about First Nation stuff. Mm. <laughs> I understand. So as you see guys, after my second hitchhiking attempt, I'm, I'm already on the territory where the First Nations appear with their local businesses. You can see a totem inside the events of the local business. It looks cool, it looks cool. And the very, the, the very nice view open up. Even with this fog, but thankfully I have a good camera so you can enjoy it a bit. It looks gorgeous. That's for sure. I just look at this rain. A lot of water. A lot of water goes. You know. And what is your name? Adelaida. Adelaida? Oh, it's amazing. What is his name? It's a Spanish name. Spanish, Spanish, of course, because in Dominican Republic you speak Spanish as well, do you? Yeah, and Haiti speaks French and Patois. Patois? It's like a local language? Yeah, it's a, a mix of uh, French and uh, African languages yeah. Yeah. and uh, possibly a little bit of uh, First Nation. Yeah. So actually, like in Dominican Republic, like few hundred years ago, they was brought people for, from Africa to make a job so, as well. Yeah, yeah. and the people that were brought, they rebelled against the Spaniards, against the Spaniards, and they moved to the west side of the island. And the people that had more Spanish stayed on the east side. Okay. And that's the two thirds of the island. One third of the island, Haiti. Haiti has one third of the island. And they have more of a pride, all guys, more of Brits, is their capital. It's a very, very poor country. So it's not a rich country. Very, very good. Well, what is the average salary in Mars? Uh, around? It, it, I don't know, it's Haiti because Haitians and Dominicans don't talk to each other. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but what is that? Well, for example, in Ukraine, average salary now, I would say 500 Canadian bucks. Yeah. It's yeah. A, in Dominican, it's a more or less? Less. Less. Oh my God. Dominican Republic and Haiti even less than Dominican Republic. Mm. But at least you have a good weather result. Well, not uh, all of this, what we have yeah. now. Yeah. Did you see the ten people in Victoria? Yeah, it's a lot of people. A lot, no, ten. Ten, yes. Yeah, ten people in Victoria. That should not be. Victoria is rich. Yeah, you know, no, in Victoria, like, you know, you go to the public transport and you see, like, you know, a guy with a Rolex in the hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's, there's no reason for there to be 10 people. There's a lot of empty uh, buildings. Really? There's, oh yeah, there's buildings that should be filled up. In fact, there, there's a place called Our Place. And some 10 people move from the tents to that place. But why is not gonna happen there, in your opinion? The body, you know, the government keeps the body, 
They're corrupted everywhere. It's a government. They're trying to be nice, but I'm sure that some of the some people in government are also corrupted. Of course. But, but do you think, like, in Canada level of corruption, like, very less than in the in, in the media no? Yeah. But, but, but still, there is some people who you know who do things. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And City of Totem. Yes. Welcome to Duncan. This is our brain. As you may notice, I created the video a very first time in my life. So, and I don't even have a laptop, so I created it only with my smartphone. And I would like to give a lot of thanks to the company called VN, Video Reductor and Maker. Uh, thanks to this program, I make the, my this very first YouTube video without watermarks and, uh, and this opportunity to use a lot of nice and simple functions what this video, the video creator have. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. If I be famous, I will give you advertising a lot of times. I finally arrived to Duncan and here you can see a very beautiful autumn with, a, with a some <coughs> beautiful First Nation totems. So actually Duncan is the city of totems. Like some uh, page on internet told, uh, uh, told that uh, <coughs> there is like 44 totems on the, <coughs> on the city. Some page of internet told there is a 70 something of it. But they look gorgeous. They, they look amazingly gorgeous. All of these guys. So it's an, we are in Native Heritage Center. You can even look how the build, buildings made and painted. Oh, I like this one. It's a... Uh, it's, it's funny, I can't, I cannot even like recognize the animals there, you know, I wanted to say it's eagle, but, but it's for me, it's look like, I don't know, something like mix bear and duck, <laughs> not, not really like eagle. Okay, I hope this place are open because it's pretty bad outside. Let's check it out. So I'm around the sculpture center and I just drop in to some guys who are making uh, tree shelters. Yes. So what is your name? Brian. Uh, Brian, nice to meet you. Nice Can you please explain how the tree shelter is work? How it works? Yeah. Um, so you would have your baby tree, you plant it into the ground, mm -hmm. you put this on a stake, so a long stick, Oh yeah. tip it on and then you put it over the tree to mm -hmm. protect it from bad weather or uh, mm -hmm. So actually the place before was uh, a local museum <laughs> or a local culture museum but now yeah they qualify uh, <coughs> unqualified place to make a make a business here and yeah I believe this business makes a more money than a museum because cities like it were pretty small and how I see is not a lot of tourists here, especially in not in summer time like now. <laughs> so as guys told me, this complex was shut down around 2016, and they use like a main building for a lodging, and and as you see, places around looks abandoned now. Try to check what was here. I see just honestly empty places and some some First Nations wooden works there. So some something like this beautiful door. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed too because weather is bad <laughs> and place is pretty empty. <laughs> oh my god. Oh I, I see something open here. Let's go and check. But oh, that, that looks interesting. After eyes, personal only. Hello. Is uh, it's okay if if I make a video? 
and ask you a few questions. It's okay if I make a YouTube video and ask you a few questions. Wow, so, so you make not only boats, you make a, like a huge totems. Yeah. Wow, it, it looks gorgeous. This one is carved in 1966. Excuse me? This totem pole, this totem pole was carved in 1966. Aha, so, so you just renovated. Restoring it, yes. Restoring it, renovating. Mm, nice, nice. What is your name? Dagagos. Dagagos? Yeah. Mm, my name is Simon, nice to meet you. <laughs> so so uh, are, you do, are you doing call the job alone? Are you, work, uh, are you by do it alone? Like, you solo? Do I what? Do, do, you, do you do it like by yourself, everything? My oh. son is with me today. Mm. So, so it's like family business? Yes. <laughs> nice. My other boys, when they're not working, they'll come and join me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So this uh, poll, it was uh, on Duncan or it was uh, from, where, from where it was taken? To Watson, BC. Ah, to Watson, yeah? yeah. Well, I know the place, I know the place. It stands right beside the new mall there, to Watson Mill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, so what I do is, this, uh, this is new, the test part. Mm -hmm. And if you walk down at the killer oil, you'll see what I do. Like, this is all rotten. This is all new. It's solid now. I used mm -hmm. to be able to just grab it and put my hand through it, but it's solid. Uh -huh. so, so this part, this is the half of the eagle you just added. Yes. yes. And tomorrow I'll be adding the horns back on. This is the Thunderbird. Mm. And you can see the rotten parts in between the legs. Mm -hmm, yes. I'm just cleaning that up and I'll be restoring it, mm -hmm. putting new wood in it. Then you walk down here and I'll show you the, how bad the inside rot. So, so uh, what is this one? Who, who is this it? This one's the bear. It's a bear? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, it's kind of a funny nose, like honestly yeah, everything yeah. is uh, like maybe some... <laughs> and, uh, it's holding the baby bear. This is representing the baby bear. A baby bear? Bear and the baby bear. It's yeah. interesting. So this is the mother bear with the baby bear. Oh, like like from up? From up, yeah, it looks like a bear. Because from yeah. side, it's very hard to guess. <laughs> here you go, okay. the eagle. Eagle? Yeah. Sitting on top of the killer whale. <coughs> And you can see we're replacing the rotten part with that uh, good wood. Mm -hmm. So, so you will replace uh, replace the wood and put also uh, who, who you will put here? Yeah. That um, you will put a veil here. Pardon me. You will put a veil here. Yes. Yeah. 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 I see. I, I, see, I see the tail. Yeah. And see yeah. the top part is over there drying. Oh. In front of the heater. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, just uh, give me a second, I will check. Hmm. Uh, did, did you have a, like, uh, language courses here as well? <laughs> or... This is our language here? Yeah. Mokstem itano kamoku itsliko. We are connected one way or another, that's what that means. Hmm, yeah, yeah, I, I heard the slogan, like, it's, um, it's a very good philosophy. Yeah. It's a very good philosophy. I, 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 I kind of share it myself as well, that everything is connected in this world. It's, that's what it means, we're connected to this. We don't let our totem poles die. Mm -hmm. We keep them alive, keep them going. No, of course, of course, it's like... I was only four years old when this was carved. So afterward, then it's going to last another 50 years. Uh, five zero? Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a while. <laughs> yeah, See, that's this that is dry. It was soaking wet, eh? Mm -hmm. The rain got in it there and got it all wet, and that's what caused it to rot. There's the blow spot of the killer whale. Mm. Looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, let me close my umbrella. <laughs> and what is this face? That's the human spirit. That's the blow spot of the killer whale. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, of course, you say everything connected and yeah. hu humans supposed to be there as well. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I like the, I, I like that place. These are the are uh, it's, racing it's, canoes. Racing? Yeah, we race these canoes. Mm -hmm. This is the ones we travel on. One, the bigger ones. Yes. That can handle the ocean water. Oh yeah, let's look on this. It, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's I did not like a good thing. Mm, good twelve meters, I think. How much people can fit this, 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 this huge boat? That one can hold uh, 15 to 20 people. Up to 10 people? Yeah. Hmm. And, it, and it still will be a lot of place for this 8 to 10 people, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this one here, both these can you hear singles, what they call one man can Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're the same. One man's knee, but different, different lengths and different styles. Mm. These ones are built for speed. For speed? What is a speed? For racing. Oh, for racing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that one's built to handle the rough water. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, do people actually often like fishing uh, um, on this canoe? Or do you fishing guys? Like fishing. Oh, do, yeah. do you catch a fish? Yeah. On these ones, yeah. Oh, on the, oh, on the upper one. Yeah. Mm. These ones, like I said, are made oh. for racing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, but how you do the fishing, like with, with the nets or with the like, you know, just a uh, just a rope? We had our traditional lures that we used. Um, our traditional fishing line were made out of various um, plant, like vines, mm -hmm. or sinew from uh, a deer or um, elk, the sinew comes from the back part, and that was our fishing line back in the day. Mm. Then we had our traditional hooks made out of wood and bone. Now we've got the, the fishing hooks that everybody uses. And we, yeah. <laughs> we use the big canoes to do mm. everything, travel, mm. fish, hunt. Yeah. But if people go, for example, on this canoe for a fishing, how much day they can spend on the sea a row? Depends where they go. Mm. Our travel used to go right down as far as San Diego, USA, mm -hmm. and as far north as Alaska. Oh, wow. For the whole coast, we traveled on canoes like that. Mm -hmm. It's like the ancestors. Yes, because now, now you need, now it's like they put border security everywhere on sea, <laughs> and it's not very possible, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Uh. Oh, and, and, and what about this one? It's also like for, for the, the, the same, same time. For the, you can hold uh, a lot of people on these canoes. Yeah. Right. The books are very nice. I know everybody waits for this question, so I asked Mr. Dagagis how much he make from a one totem pole. His answer was that from one feet or 30 centimeters he make around, around uh, 3000 Canadian dollar or 30 Canadian dollar for uh, one centimeter of height of pole. Average totem height, it's around 10 meters, so it makes 30 grand for one pole. And for renovation like now, they, they get paid twice. How much time they need to make whole job? Between 10 for 12 weeks for a two person. Actually, I want to see how much top terms I would be able to find on um, uh, on this city by walking myself. So this one's the first one. Oh, the guys with their factory, they already finished their working day. 4 p.m., why not? So it's the second, second poll. The third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. I was extremely lucky to find some office on the property and find this very beautiful woman in head of the office who was supposed to finish. 
her shift already, but she was very nice and gave me half an hour for we get uh, some small interview for us guys. Now you can see some pictures from their office around and I very welcome you to enjoy this upcoming interview. Thank you very much you guys for watching until this very moment and enjoy. My question is about are it's like easy to native person to integrate to the like you know to the big city to the Canadian society. For the most part, here in Duncan, yeah, it is because okay. uh, we're not. Um, Duncan's pretty small, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, for the most, it's not like Toronto where you have to go into a big city or Vancouver and adapt mm -hmm. and. And learn, I think it is, it is for the most part for the couch and people, I would mm. say, yeah. And what about high education? Are people like willing to go in the big cities to get a high education, like young people? For sure, it's um, there. There are a handful of people that are doing schooling and uh, university mm. and trades. And such, I've got my but degree. Yeah. Yeah. I also have a bachelor of finance, so yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so does he. And so, uh, how, how people usually, like, you know, spend their, like, free time? Do they have, like, any, like, hobbies or, like, way of spending evenings? For sure. So, um,. A lot of our couch and people are younger, so there a lot of them are into sports. So soccer's huge, um, softball's huge, canoe pulling's huge. Um, there's some lacrosse players. There's some football players. So, so some players which play like on the Canadian leagues. So. There are a couple that have that are making it pretty big. There's uh, one one of our youth. He's in the Whitecaps Academy right now. So he lives in Vancouver. And he's 14 just, years old. We just recently sponsored one of them to go to England because they were scouted from a team. Yeah. Was it Manchester? I can't remember. Something like that. It was they an were invited to come and spend some time with the team and train. So we mm -hmm. sponsored them to go over to England. So yeah. Hmm, nice, nice, uh, nice. I, I was actually saw this photos of this uh, article. Yeah. Of, uh, it was a some girl in a Manchester City t shirt. So yeah, 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 that's correct. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it nice? Is it so, actually, like, uh, who, who was paying for it again? We, we paid for Well, I believe for her, this team paid for it, but we didn't want to send her by herself. She's, I think, 14. 14. Oh. We sponsored her mom to go with her and we bought her plane ticket, hotel tickets and gave her money to spend while she's there so she has somebody with her. Mm, that's great, that's great. I, I believe you like, you you give a like a wonderful adventure to the girls. For sure, yeah. Um, Couts and Development Corporation and Couts and Forest Services uh, really want to provide those kind of opportunities for the youth that are doing. Mm -hmm. We also provided um, a few teams to go to Seashell. It's a couple ferry rides away from mm -hmm. here. They went to a soccer tournament there. And um, yeah, we're just looking at a bunch of initiatives of how we can keep our youth engaged and providing opportunities. We can't say what we're going to do in the up and coming years, but there are some big things that Cats and Development Corporation mm -hmm. are looking at doing, providing mm -hmm. for our youth. And what actually about like young people? Are they like still going to east to the past, you know, to get uh, married in the early age and, and get uh, like plenty of kids, or are they more about like like more like more modern people of my age? To, to, to get married, you know, not before sorty and uh, and kids, or not sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's not in the Pocahontas days anymore, we were getting married at 13, but I think there are a bunch of our people that have chosen to um, have big families, and so it 
I don't, I don't think we can fine tune it because we have 5,000 members. It's um, a mix, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, the question, are a lot of like native people have deep marriage on the foreign person, like as a Canadians or as anybody, somebody else? Or they usually try to keep to, you know, to visit their, their nation? It depends who you talk to and it depends what families you talk to. Um, I think most do try to keep it within the First Nations communities. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, the, the but uh, like for example, Kovichan people try to find somebody exactly on e from Kovichan or no. e, uh, so, so 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 but some first some another First Nations. It's yeah. uh, okay to, to look other at. First Nations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we do practice a lot of our cultural practices still, and for us to be able to hand those practices down mm -hmm. to our children, it's. Um, yeah, you, you do want to keep it. Because I read mm -hmm. that it's like a lot of uh, small different tribes, you know, who may speak yeah. like, like language even different and mm -hmm. maybe some you know, different traditions. Yeah. Uh, so how, how like, um, like First Nations go ahead with uh -huh. each other? Like are, um, like uh, are it's like everybody friendly or it's neutral or it's maybe some little bit conflicts going on between uh, no between between like you know like between between different first nations around the BC for example mm. again I probably that's probably a tough one to answer <laughs> <laughs> um. I think for the most part, a lot of people are in the modern world and um, respectful of different nations and different people and different ethnicities, but I'm sure there probably are differences or competition. I think for the most part, competition would probably be in like the sports world. Oh, yeah, so, 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 those rivalries are aren't like we're trying to kill each other, but it's mm -hmm. like we're gonna win the next tournament sort of thing. So mm -hmm. it's not at the level that it used to be probably a hundred yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. The hundred was hundred years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, it's a question. How oh, it was hundred years ago. Yes, I'm not very familiar. <laughs> oh, um, you guys should watch the documentary Zuhalem. What the name again? Zuhalem. Zuhalem. Yes. T Z U or O U H A L E M. It's a documentary on um, some of the couch and people and the interactions with mm -hmm. other nations. I'm not much of a storyteller, so I would probably butcher up the story if I was. Mm -hmm. So, can you tell me like the last? time when like one tribe go war with another tribe when it was last time long time ago that's probably more than 100 years ago i'm not sure more more, more <laughs> than 50 years ago <laughs> you yeah. might have to research uh couch and tribes and oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately honestly it's, it's not a lot of no um, so the other resource you can look at is Those Who Fell From the Sky. It's mm -hmm. a book you can find in bookstores. Mm, yeah. So it's uh, the legends of the couch and people. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah, it'd be a good read. Yeah. Two more questions. So two more questions. So actually I was read about um uh Kovinchan people like you know they have a local businesses with the oriental price of uh, sixty million dollars. And, and, and then he was uh, and, and he was uh, tell me about it's um, like you have like uh, some buildings and stuff. Uh, so I believe it's um, it's uh, one of the part of this big business. 
But, but what type of another business, businesses owned by locals? Well, for example, I was telling you about the construction we do. Yes. So we employ companies who are 100% owned by Couch and Tribe members. So I believe we have around eight companies mm -hmm. who are owned by Couch and Tribe members and they mostly employ Couch and Tribe members. So those mm -hmm. would be some of the companies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that would be the that would be our civil construction yeah. department. Mm -hmm. uh, within the economic development, we have four Costa Canas. Mm -hmm. So that's our weed dis dispensaries, cannabis dispensaries. Mm -hmm. That's um, a good business. Yeah, we have other partnerships in the work. Mm -hmm. um, we have. United Greeneries, which is the growing of the cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think we're the first ones to be able to grow and sell. Might be Some, something like that, I think that's what Jody had said. I know, I think Couch and uh, the Chances Casino is owned by Tribes, if I'm not wrong. Or it's a partnership. They lease from us. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah they lease from I us. I know in Amer in United States, it's a, a huge Saint Louis casino owned by mm -hmm. First Nations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely big over there. Okay, let's go with the last question. Okay. What is your <coughs> favorite uh, local celebration? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I think I'd have to say Christmas. <laughs> it sounds pretty funny coming from, <laughs> but you know, we get two weeks off, we get to spend it with family. Two weeks it, off? Yeah. Wow, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, like it's all over Canada? Like this? No, just our here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes snowing. Fire is going, family's all around. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, but, but you celebrate it like, you know, like like everybody. Mm -hmm, we do. Like gifts to kids and. Uh, yeah. But, 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 do, <coughs> but are there any like re religious component when you do celebrate Christmas? Not so much, no. Like, um,. Me, like the cousins and the aunts will get together. We usually try to, um, that's where we'll go over family trees. So we've actually went up eight generations from me. So mm -hmm. um, uh, once you hit a certain, I think, like I said, it's like my great grandparents, you're hitting Indian names, not given government names. <laughs> Um, so it's pretty cool, uh, and then, like my aunt, she's pretty fluent in Hulkmeenum, so she'll teach, we do, we learn Christmas songs, and then that's where we usually have them at our big Christmas dinner. So, like I said, my, my dad has 12 siblings, I have a ton of cousins, we just all come together, do turkey dinner, all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Send some songs. That's a good time. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> you know, I just thinking like it's very very cool. But we, which type of house you need to have for different body? <laughs> <laughs> we just fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's um. Yeah, we just take it. Well, usually we'll rent a hall. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for this type of family, we can even rent a small hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we usually, there's a, a few nice ones. There's one a nice one up Lenora and a few in mm. the area. Wow, so, so thank you very much for sure. this interview. I very appreciate that you spent some time for me. Yeah. It was very nice. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I will try to make some.
bottom number three and now I will prove you that it's not all what you see it's what you think so on the top it's an oval and oval on top because it's a pr protector of the night and also it's a sign a symbol of wisdom and warns the people of danger or if death is near so this guy on the middle it's a sun can you imagine it's a sun no, I will not. Ne I will not never get myself if I, if I don't have a writing down myself. <laughs> so sun is the symbol of healing, and also it's a guardian in the daytime. So you see, it's a balance. Night and the day both are protected and balanced. And going down, this guy it will be a bear, and uh, bear in the bottom it's a guardian and protector of the river and all the lands. And he is the symbol also of power of uh, and strength. So here is like only three symbols, but uh, as you see for First Nations, it is a very powerful meanings, which we appreciate. Yeah, for, for everybody who doesn't speak Ukrainian or Russian, they will not get a humor, but it's very funny if you know Ukrainian or Russian. Huyuchka. Thank you. Ah, uh, this one actually I would call it 16 pole, and uh, it's, it's an entrance to this local culture center. Many of us there over ago, here it was a plenty of, you know, drug using people or alcohol, whatever. And, and yeah, it's supposed to be entrance, but this uh, this very house it looks totally abandoned. So everything, everything it was behind, behind, uh, behind, behind the net. Meanwhile, city looks like pretty simple for Canada. Real Canadian superstore and humor. Another shops, also popular chain London drugs. Not actual drugs, you know, just a medicine, anything illegal, and that's it. So funny thing, when I start to make a videos today, I don't have a, like a selfie pot with me. So I was arrived to the shop and I I buy some selfie pot for, right now for myself. You can Actually, the prices for stuff are crazy, like uh, 80 bucks or this one even, like for, it was for Tower for 100 bucks, this with a trimmer, it's 85 bucks. So I end up to buy like, you know, just the cheapest one because I'm a poor Ukrainian and I was lucky because it was um, discounted and I buy it just for 20 bucks. So yeah, now I'm this uh, selfie pot and I'm can call myself officially video blogger. <laughs> I decided to continue my way to another city right now on the night. Look at this guys. This Ukrainian hearts make my soul warmer. Yeah. situation because I try to call a few hotels uh, and they don't have night auditor working there so they cannot sell me a room well actually it's 
I haven't seen a hitchhiker since before COVID. <laughs> you like me to do that and I can pick you up together with Simon and then use that truck to go around. You wanna host him? My friend just said that the trail just started, isn't it? Yeah, it just started. <laughs> yeah, we just started. <laughs> Uh, I wait to hear my make a video. <laughs> and this is a her family mansion, which she got from there uh, from her grandma. And right now Pamela is here, and she wants to make some reality show. Totems 18, 19, 20, and 21. What can I say? It's a bad place. I stay here around two hours. Also, in the next video, you will find out why some local Nemo bar threatened me for, for, for I move, go out and they even try to call cops on me. And the situation of this night is up, so I call cops myself. How it will finish? You need to watch my second video. And I very grateful for everybody who watch my who watch this video until end, who who put a like, who subscribe my channel for me. It's a very very big step. I finally make this my very first YouTube video, and this means so the main step done. So it will be another video, the second one, the third one. I really hope so. so thank you for support, everybody. Have a have a great day and adieu. Everything will be good for, for everybody of us. I really believe this. Bye.